Hi everybody, Diana here at So Uncommon. Yes, I'm sitting here in my robe. Good morning, it's early morning, and yes, I look a mess because I just came in from my run. So um, today is this very special day. It is International Volunteer Day. Volunteering is something that is extremely dear to my heart. Um, so I wanted to come to you today and share something with you that's going to kind of preview our Wednesday workshop tomorrow and tell you about how this is going to work. And so um, I didn't want to wait until this afternoon to get this out to you. Um, so I just <laughs> took off my sweaty running clothes and put my rug back on and grabbed my cup of coffee. So this is my day, just so I digress a bit. When I get up in the morning, the very first thing I do is throw on my running clothes and um, my shoes, and I go out and I run about six miles. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less if I've had a late night and I get up a little bit later. But then when I come back, I throw on an old robe, um, not my good robe, but just my old robe, and make myself a cup of coffee and I sit down and I work for a little while. But um, I didn't want to take the time to go ahead and get ready. And you guys have seen me look like a hot mess before. It's really windy out today. It's only, it's only 36 degrees out this morning. Now, I run in colder weather before, but I don't like to. It's not great for my muscles and stuff. Um, so, because um, I will admit I'm not the best warmer upper before I start my run. I like throw the shoes on and go. But I do like stretch and stuff after. So, you know, I, and on cold days, I do like I'll wear a scarf. I wear something to keep my ears warm, that kind of thing. And I usually wear something that goes over my mouth so that I'm breathing in kind of warmer, recycled air. Um, anyway, um, that's just my morning routine. But it's cold this morning. It's 36 degrees. I don't like to run outside after it goes below 40 typically. Um, instead, I'll run on an inside track. So one of those two things. All right. So, um, but it's volunteer day and I wanted to get our day off right now while it's still, you know, it's, it's still pretty early in the morning for some folks. And depending on where you are, it could be in the middle of the night. I don't know. Anyway, and it was windy. So yeah, I look like a hot mess, but that's okay because I want to share this with you. Volunteer ism to me, like I said, means the world to me. When I was growing up, my mother's, my mother and father worked harder than any two people I know. My mother held down jobs. My father was in the military when I was very young. And then when he got out and went to work um, in his career, he held down at 1.3 jobs and my mom held down a job. Um, and so they worked harder than anyone to make a life for me and them and then later on for me and them and my brother um but i was very fortunate because i had some very specific women in my life that really made a difference to me and that was my two aunts my mother's two younger sisters that are just see i get teary-eyed they mean the world to me and then my best friend growing up her mother, sorry, her mother was the best example to me of what a volunteer is. She was the most, is the most selfless giving person I've ever known in my life. And just by watching her live her life, I learned about what a blessing it can be to be a volunteer. She never pushed us to do those things. But that's what makes a good role model, just by watching. You don't have to pound into someone's head your ideas and your thoughts about things. Just do them and let people see it. And then that can bring them into those kinds of activities as well. Volunteerism, faith, all that kind of stuff, right? Anyway, so just watching her made me realize what a blessing it is to volunteer and what it means to give back to others because we're all on this world together. We might live in different places and we might call ourselves different things, but we're all on this one planet together. We are all citizens of this planet. So anyway, for International Volunteer Day, I was thinking about this yesterday. 
uh, quilters make the very best volunteers. I mean, they really do. We are a giving, loving bunch of people, be men or women or young people or older folks. We tend to be very giving. So I am setting you a challenge, okay? Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, the 6th of December, is our Wednesday workshop, and we're going to be doing the wreath that I showed you earlier in a previous video. Excuse me. My nose is not running since I was crying, and it's cold. <laughs> um, and um, mine is actually over on my design board because I'm still finishing up some of the filming for it today. Um, but the pattern is done. It's our, we're calling it the fanciful florette because florette is another synonym for a wreath or a circlet of greenery or flowers, right? So I've done this in kind of some holiday-esque colors. And the one that you're going to see tomorrow is holiday-esque with the 50s twist to it. So I think you'll like it. If you don't necessarily like to do traditional holiday colors for Christmas, I mean, then these colors... It could be done beautifully for Hanukkah colors if you wanted to do it as a holiday wreath. But this florette could be done in any color scheme you want. You could do one for every season. And it makes about a 20 by 20 table topper or wall hanging. So this pattern is ready. It's out on the website now. It's just like everything. You get your digital files. You get your basic, oops, your basic information. Um, oh, my hands are so cold, I can't work my paper. You get your template layout. Um, you get your cut sheet, excuse me. Oh, my fingers are just not working. You get your cut sheet, all of the information. You get the coloring sheet. Now, here's something I wanna say about the coloring sheet real quick. If you've got little ones that you need to keep busy, print some of your coloring sheets from your quilting patterns off, give them their crayons and let them go to town with it. And then you have, you can send them home to your kids that are their parents. If you're grandparents, you can send that home with them with their own little wreaths. If you're teachers, feel free to print those off. If you teach like, um, uh, if you're like in Girl Scouts or Sunday schools or whatever like that, and you teach groups and you want an activity, feel free to use those for that purpose. I, I give my my blessing and my, my wholehearted permission for you to do that. But this is out there. The whole pattern packet, so all of the written materials and the digital files to do with your embroidery machine, $5. That's really economical. And I know that's less than a cup of coffee for a lot of people who buy coffee out at the coffee shops like me, except when I'm at home and I have my nice big mug that I make my coffee in. $5 is nothing. And that money is not going to stay with me. That money is going to go to a children's charity this holiday season. All the proceeds. If I, if 10 of you buy this pattern, the money from those 10 patterns go. If 100 of you buy this pattern, if 180,000 of you, because that's where we are uh, with our subscriber base at this point, all of that money is going to go to a children's charity. And if there's a lot of it, maybe we can split it up into a couple of children's charities, but I want to get it out to them by the 15th of the month so that... Um, so that they can use money to make the lives of children better. Um, it's going to go for food for these children. It's going to go for medical care for these children. And it's also going to go for clothes and hopefully something special at Christmas, a toy or a book. I would love it, of course, as a reader, if it went for books. So that's where your $5 when you purchase this is. And then if you purchase this today, while we're doing this on volunteer day, the video for workshop Wednesday tomorrow is all about how to make this. Okay. And then we'll talk about fabrics. I've got mine made. I've got all my video clips that I'm finishing on the how to process for you. Um, but just know that you through the purchase of this are volunteering to help a child, a child in need. Um, and those children can be small children all the way up through teenagers. Sometimes we forget that we have teenagers in rough spots 
and they're still children and they still need our care. So these funds are going to go for ch to children of all ages at this at this facility. All right. So please go now to the website. There it goes to the website and purchase your pattern pack. Then tomorrow, check back in because at midnight, the um, how to video is going to pop up for workshop Wednesday. OK, and you're going to see mine all the way through the piece process. And then um, I'll fill you in as we go along throughout the next week and how I've quilted mine and all. But you can quilt it and put it together however you want. And let me just say this. If you want to make these as Christmas gifts in different colors to match people's decor and stuff, make a great gift. And this is something quickly that went together. I pieced my whole top for this in about an hour and a half. That was all the piecing, sewing together, everything. I got it done in about an hour and a half yesterday. Um, so they go together really quickly. Um, and so you can certainly do that. All right, folks, International Volunteer Day. Let's volunteer to help some children in need today, please. And maybe go and lend a hand, lend a hand to a neighbor. Maybe you have an older neighbor who needs a little extra help now and again. Maybe you've made your Christmas cookies and goodies and you want to box some of those up and take them. Is that volunteerism? Yes, because socializing and giving like that is something that we truly need as humans. And so, yes, that's volunteering as well, in my opinion. Or go to a local charity and say, hey, I've got four hours today. What can I do to help you folks? Do you just need like things picked up? Do you need me to go sit with patients at a local hospital? Are you someone that absolutely adores babies? Check with your local. Now, you might not be able to do this right away. There might be a little bit of a process with this one. But trust me, it's so worth it to be a baby rocker. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? You get to go and help when they're understaffed and all. And when moms aren't maybe feeling really well or need a little, maybe need a little extra sleep or babies need, babies in NICU sometimes need extra care. Sometimes special volunteers can come in and rock or touch or talk or read or find out if you can go and read stories to the kids in the pediatric wing or maybe go see if there's any way you can go, whatever the hospital needs as a volunteer. Hospital volunteerism is how I started out as a volunteer in my life. I was a candy striper at two different hospitals, and then I went on to you know work in medicine because I loved it so much. Um, but that's how I started out. So maybe check with a local hospital. Maybe you could go to your local library and say, hey, do you need somebody to shelve books for you for an hour? Do anything like that at all. People really appreciate it. And it really, you meet new people, you get involved with the community, and it enriches your life more than you will ever know. And you might not know in that one hour that you're volunteering, but at some point in your life, that one hour is going to make a huge explosive um, difference in your life. Trust me, it will. I volunteered um, as the liaison between schools command and um, the new um, officer recruits when my husband Dave first uh, became an officer in the Navy while he was in flight school. And it was completely volunteer. And I had to give a talk every Saturday to the new class. And one of the things I told them was, I keep hearing from you guys, because they were classes of all men at that time, that you've wanted to fly or be in the Navy or be an officer, whatever it was, since you were little kids. And this next 14, 16 weeks is going to be hard. Yes, it will be. They're going to put you through your paces. But you can do anything for 14 weeks that you've wanted since you were a little kid. And so, and that was just part of my thing that I would tell them. Four years later, when we were stationed on Whidbey Island, Washington, which is one of the most beautiful places on the planet, we were at a barbecue welcoming some new people to our squadron. And one of the new pilots came up to me and said, you're Mrs. Atkinson. And I said, yes, but you can just call me Diana. <laughs> um, 
And he said, you spoke when I was a new candidate officer at Schools Command in Pensacola. And you told me I could do anything for 14 weeks that I wanted this badly. And every day for 14 weeks, I reminded myself of what you said. And that got me through. And you better believe I cried, right? I was blown away. Something that you say and do for someone might not seem a big deal today, but someday it will just explode your life right open, okay? So my friends, my quilting friends, please go out and do something today for a volunteer. Grab your pattern and those proceeds can help children during this holiday season, children that are in need. And until next time, and remember you can get your pattern at the website. Until next time, please go make life beautiful by sewing life beautiful. Bye everybody.